Um, but if anyone's curious, I think you just need to know the basic ingredients of slap. Uh, and then you can combine them as you see fit. So obviously the... That's number one, probably the joint of your thumb, just bouncing on the string. And it's got to be a bounce, it's got to leave the string as rapidly as it hit it. Around here seems like a good place. If you slap here, it's too tinny. If you slap there, you hurt yourself, but here... So that's ingredient number one. Some people can do the clever Victor Wooten thing where you can slap up and down. And for me, that only works on the E string. I think my thumb is bigger than the gap between two strings. I can't get it in there. So I don't really do that. If you want to find out more about that, check out a guy called Scotty Mishu, who's unbelievably good at the double thump. But for me, it's just a way of hitting the string. And if I want more notes than then I can do with my thumb, I slap with this hand which is not a clever Guthrie trick, this is what bass players do. Uh, they alternate between this and this, which doesn't sound like much on its own. Um, but if you start trying to play some drum rudiment type ideas where you alternate in different patterns between like, it starts to sound like a drummer doing the two-handed thing. Or you might try doubling up some of the notes on this hand. Also, you can slap either the open string there or after you've done this with your your fretting hand, you can slap the dead note. So I guess there's three ingredients there. There's that one, this one, and that one. then you just throw in some pulls for a bit of percussive interest. Uh, mostly it's not about the notes. This style of playing is not about playing an awesome, memorable melody. Uh, the tab for this will probably just be a bunch of X on various strings. Uh, but that's okay, you're just trying to create a rhythmic vibe. If you want to be melodic, do something else, don't slap. That's my theory. So you could combine maybe That's kind of a popular ingredient, which makes me think of people like Stu Ham, where you've got a pull, and then that, and then slap the string whilst it's deadened. So. Um, as I say, they're just ingredients, then you put them in whatever order you like. Um, I guess the only other thing I do that I don't see a lot of other people doing is I try to take that up a level. So instead of just using the whole hand to mute, I can divide it up into maybe two or three bits. And then I can get a more complicated drum rudiment. So instead of just... I might have... that kind of idea. So you might have some fun with that. Uh, and I think you, you end up thinking of something like this as a word rather than a series of letters. And then when you're trying to come up with a slap groove, you're putting the words in different orders and always just trying to be mindful of where the groove is, where the pulse of the music is, and making sure you don't get lost. Uh, the wonderful slippery thing groove. Um, slightly different because it's not 16th notes, it's a kind of 16th note triplet thing. Um, so in, in funk terms, it's the difference between just a... and more of that tower of power, two, three, four... Um, that kind of thing. 
So what's going on there is I'm pulling open D string for some reason and then hammering onto a higher note on a lower string. So it's open D and then seventh fret on the A. And then lots of nonsense on the low E string. So slap, slap with the other hand, slap the deadened note. And then I think that again, let me check by playing it. Uh, yeah. So pull, hammer, slap, dead, slap the dead thing, slap it again with this hand. And that's it. And then there's a couple of variations on that. You could do... That's the same thing, but the pull is now on the open E. And there's this one here. If you're thinking E Hendrix, you could pull the open G and then hammer onto the sixth fret of the D. So... Here it is, slow, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Slides help you to phrase in a more vocal way, I think. So... like the Indian music thing, as I, I do. There's lots of that. Um... And there's a scary, scary guy called Self Ganesh who plays mandolin with John McLaughlin sometimes, and he's doing like 14 fret slides at ridiculous speeds, and he never misses a note. But that's more the Indian approach to playing a stringed instrument. You just take one string that you like and just make music on that string sometimes for minutes on end. Um, so I can't do any of that stuff, but uh, in terms of applying it to what you might already play, uh, like for this box there, you might just look at a few slides. Uh, you could do it systematically, both by taking every note and finding out where the next note in the scale is. that um, or you might try to write some licks where you've got two scale shapes next to each other so everyone's favorite shape there and then the Albert King shape up here so um, so the problem with slide playing normally is if you've got a guitar set up for all this gibberish your action is generally quite low and then you try to play with a slide and you're actually pushing the string onto the fret or you get that noise which doesn't help you to sound vocal at all so traditionally uh, the approach has been to have another guitar, like buy a cheap Dan Electro or something and raise the action and put heavy strings on it. Uh, I don't like that because I've, I do so many gigs and clinics where I have to fly and I can only take one guitar. Uh, so I found this is quite a helpful thing. Raise the action at the nut end of the guitar instead and it's completely reversible. You just put these, it could be a beer mat or train ticket folded up or whatever you like. Uh, I like to use something I will always have on me, um, and I've generally got plenty of these. Um, and now I can dig in as much as I like. And it's a much louder, clearer note. I think the tone is bigger. And because I can push in further, I can kind of sustain it for longer. For something like that, which is what, an A major sixth or 
F sharp minor seven, I guess. I'm looking for all the notes I can find from that arpeggio within one octave. And there they are. So be careful with this finger. This finger generally doesn't have to. Doesn't have to hammer on as much as the other finger, so it might be a little weak. So, so you might want to work on that just to check that you're getting enough force with the index finger and then and you've got that shape there. Uh, if you're Jennifer Batten or more of that kind of player, you might maybe both of your hands are good and you'd prefer to do that. My thing is, this hand has been fretting notes for a lot longer than this hand, so it's better at it. Um, it's stronger, I've got my thumb behind there, and I can stretch further. So, I, again, it's a personal thing. I like to get this hand to do most of the work, and then this is the spare. So, so let's say that's your arpeggio shape, and you want to make it bigger. Now, because you've already used every note in the arpeggio once, you should be able to use exactly the, sh the same shape to play the same notes up an octave. So if you're starting here, you would move up to the G string, so you've skipped a string altogether, and up two frets. So at this point, you want to check the join. So maybe just stop after that note to check that it's in time and it's loud and it's a thing of joy to listen to. And then... And you can take it further. You might move up onto the E string and do it another three frets up. So magically you have an enormous arpeggio. But actually it's just the same idea in three different places. And for certain things I do, like in... those kind of licks there where you're using lots of fingers on this hand it's harder to mute the strings the traditional way so that's just back up what happens in real life is I'm playing that song I'm doing the normal normal rock stuff and then it's time for and sometimes I forget to slide this over so it kind of works without the hairband mostly it's just for extra security um, it's kind of a E flat chord of love. That's the background. And essentially what I'm doing is these notes. And I'm trying to split the notes on each string between the two hands. So for, for anything like that, this hand plays the high one and this hand plays the low one. So if I line it all up, um, you get that kind of sound. Huh? And then the fun is because you've distributed the notes this way, you don't have to play them all in order. So what I'm doing here is playing two notes with this hand. So it's that one and then this one. And then in my song sevens, I've just broken that up so that it, the pattern fits into a group of seven, a bar of seven four. But you don't need to do that. Just take the idea, write your own lick with it. <laughs> um. 